Hey grillers, I'm Brad, and you're watching BB Grill Shack, where we focus on barbecue tips, tricks, reviews, and recipes. Today I'm finding out the answer to a question that's been bothering me for weeks. Can you make ketchup out of tomatillos? I'm not really 100% sure where the idea came from, but for the last couple of weeks, I can't stop thinking about tomatillo ketchup, and I don't know why. But what I do know is I haven't really seen anything on the internet. I've searched around a little bit on YouTube, and I can't really find a bunch of information about tomatillo ketchup. I've also never made tomato ketchup before, so this is going to be my first time making ketchup, and it's going to be my first time making tomatillo ketchup. I wanted to make this an experiment, so I'm not following any other recipe exactly, but I am following two tomato ketchup recipes fairly closely. One of those is a video by Urban Chickadoodle. I'll leave a link in the description, and it's a really interesting video. I would highly recommend checking it out if you guys have a bunch of tomatoes you're growing and you need something extra to do with them. The second recipe resource I used was from a blog called Boulder Locavore, and she has some really great recipes over there too and some really great blog posts. So I'll leave a link in the description to both of those. The first thing I did was went to the store and I picked up about eight tomatillos. These are about medium size. You can get them at most grocery stores. Tomatillos are really interesting. They look a lot like a tomato from the outside, minus the leaves that cover them and the color. But on the inside, I don't really think they look like a tomato. They also don't really taste like a tomato. They're a little bit sweet, a little bit spicy, and a little bit sour. It's really a pretty interesting and unique taste. But I figured they look enough like tomatoes that maybe I can just make a tomato ketchup and substitute the tomatillos in for the tomatoes. I also picked up a full Anaheim pepper, but I previously used half of it for a salsa. So I'm only gonna be using half of an Anaheim pepper. I peeled the leaves off of the tomatillos, rinsed them, and cut them into quarters and just threw them right into my Instapot. With the Anaheim pepper, I de-seeded it, chopped it up, and threw it in the pot as well. I also grabbed a white onion at the store. I chopped half of this and threw it into the Instapot to cook along with the tomatillo and the Anaheim. I also threw a half a cup of water into the Instapot so that it would cook properly. I didn't really know if it would steam and close the lid with just the tomatillos and other vegetables. Before I sealed up the Instapot, I sprinkled it in a little bit of salt to help these boil down and I put the Instapot on manual for 10 minutes. The purpose of this pressure cooking step is to break the tomatillos and other vegetables down so that we can blend them, strain them, and start simmering them down into a ketchup. So once the vegetables were done in the Instapot, I poured them into a blender and I added other seasonings such as two cloves of garlic, a quarter of a guajillo chili, one bay leaf, two cloves, five black peppercorns, and a dash of cinnamon. I blended up all these ingredients together. There's a puree setting on my blender and I used the puree setting. And to be honest, I used the puree setting twice so that I could get everything really blended up. In one of the recipes I mentioned before, the author uses a cheesecloth pouch to boil the seasonings in with the ketchup while it's simmering. I didn't want to do this, so I blended everything together and then strained out whatever came out. The straining process for this puree is pretty easy. Just pour it through a fine wire mesh strainer and then use a spoon to agitate the mix so that you can filter out all of the seeds and skin. Lastly, I poured the strained puree back into my Instapot, turned it on saute, and added a few more ingredients such as some more salt, some white vinegar, some apple vinegar, a few splashes of Worcestershire sauce, a squeeze of lemon juice, and about a quarter cup of honey. Ultimately, I didn't really follow a recipe or keep track of most of the ingredients that I put in here, as this is kind of an experiment. I think, in hindsight, I should have put more vinegar and more honey, and it was kind of apparent right from the get-go that I should have used a little bit sweeter and a little bit more tangy ingredients. Boil down the ketchup until you think it's thick enough that you want to store it. I stored mine in a glass jar using this turkey baster. I let this cool in the fridge just to find out that it wasn't thick enough for me. So the next morning, I woke up, poured it back into a saucepan, and I boiled it down further. After it got a little bit thicker, I put it back in the same jar and you can tell that I've boiled away actually quite a bit of the moisture in this. I put this jar back in the fridge to cool down because personally, I don't like hot ketchup. Now it's cooled down, so I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison with some traditional Heinz style ketchup and see what the differences are and see if one is better than the other and anything I can learn from this experiment. I also want to do a dipping taste test. So I'm going to run to the local fast food store pick up some of America's most famous fries, and I'll be right back to do the taste test. So this is the Heinz ketchup. This is the tomatillo ketchup I made. Let's go ahead and test mine first, then the Heinz, and then we'll test mine again. It 
It's actually really good. I really like the tomatillo ketchup. You can kind of taste the sourness from the tomatillos and their unique flavor. I think I should have used a little bit more vinegar. It's lacking on the vinegar. But when I said before that I didn't use enough honey, I think I was wrong. I think I used just the right amount of honey. I think it's just lacking a little bit of vinegar. Let's do a little Heinz palate cleanser. The Heinz flavor does pop a little bit more. It's a little bit more sweet than my ketchup and that vinegar also pops really well. Let's go back to mine so I can get another taste test after the palate cleanser. Wow guys, overall I'm really happy with that and I learned a lot of great lessons here that I can move into the future with and really make a better sauce next time. That's what it's all about. Do your best, experiment, learn some stuff, do it again and get better every time. Part of the reason I originally thought about this tomatillo ketchup is I want to improve my smash burger game. So what I'm going to do next week is I'm going to have a video where I'm doing an improved smash burger from my previous video and I'm going to use this tomatillo ketchup and see how much better or worse it makes the burger. My guess is it's going to be amazing. So hopefully you guys stick around. You see that video next week. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a happy weekend. Happy 4th of July. And I'll catch you guys next week.